So in the next series of 20 plus videos, I'll be going over faction focuses for every faction in Age of Sigmar, in which I'll follow this format. First is propaganda. I'll tell stories about the army, the world, and generally set the scene and kind of paint a picture of what the army is all about, look and feel. Number two is models, where you'll get a chance to check them out and see if they strike your fancy. Number three is playstyle, army composition, and mechanics. A good tiebreaker for two equally sweet looking armies is one where the playstyle fits your personality more. Number four is stats. Everyone loves stats. These are rough approximations of power level in some simplified categories, depending on what kind of thing you like to excel at. Ranked by grades like in school, and just like in school, they say that C is average, but it's actually bad. Unlike school, but taking a page from Devil May Cry, we have S above A to point out some of the best in the entire game at said category, even if A plus is definitely good enough. These categories are wide, and they overlap, and that's by design. These aren't tiers. I did tiers last time, and I feel like it's just something for my normal show a few times per season rather than in a video for new players. If a new player is seriously interested in the tournament metagame, they can check out LOV statistics or my shows on seasonal tiers and competition or other shows or content. Someone who cares about that kind of thing will find it. Also, everyone has a second edition book now, and balance is just much better, especially in a casual environment. It's all mostly fine, save for some weird outliers that I'll mention. Also, you might be tempted to add up an army's scores to determine an average, and then compare it to some other army to figure out who would win or which is better, but it's not that simple. These are categories of stuff people might like to do well playstyle-wise, but there's a lot more to winning AOS than power. Battle plan, drops, objectives, and priority roles are just as, if not more, important when it comes to winning a particular game. Some C-average looking armies are actually killers, they just don't stand out on paper. The four stats are Offense, Defense, Positioning, and Mechanics. Offense is a measure of your relative damage on the table in normal situations. It takes into account your buffs and how easy they are to use. Consistency is king here, not just for fighting, but also how reliable your buffs are to land. Can you get that damage where it needs to go by having an answer to chaff? Do you have good answers to common durability? Are you getting what you paid for points-wise, etc. Big bonus points here for on-demand pile-in twice, as it often just straight-up doubles your damage. You also get a bonus for activation wars, such as striking first or forcing your opponent to strike last. Defense has a few different ways for you to excel. Armor is the obvious one, but unless it's truly exceptional, like 3-up or better re-rolling, it's not going to get you very high in this category. High rend and mortal wounds are very common. This one's more about after damage saves at 5-up or better, high wounds per point with good stats, baked in hit penalties, re-rolling already great armor saves, etc. If they can't hit you, they can't hurt you, and so high quality chaff can score you points here as well, as can lots of great debuffs if they're consistent, or big time troop regeneration or unit reanimation. Healing does not make for a great defensive strategy in AOS, as first of all damage is super high, and so the likelihood that you just die outright in the first combat before you can heal is high. Secondly, double turns exist, so half the time, even if the damage wasn't crazy high, it's still doubled, so you're dead anyway. And thirdly, even if you don't consider the other downsides, healing in a vacuum just isn't pushed very hard as a mechanic, and tends to be fairly weak. A lot of spells and abilities that just do, like, a d3. Positioning is movement, but I didn't call it movement because lots of factions have tricks, and it's more than just about the number on the war scroll. How it consistently plays out on the table is what really matters. Sure, if all your guys are just default 12-inch flying, that's amazing, but rare. This is where we factor in movement shenanigans. Can your battle line run and charge with a banner so you can spend a command point for auto 6 and essentially double their movement? Do you have a terrain piece or a reliable spell or endless spell that gives you a big bonus to movement? If most of your army is slow, but you have one fast flying monster, you get a few points but not too many, unless the thing is so powerful that it becomes a central strategy and it deserves a more careful look. A few intangible bonus points you can scoop up here are power projection, not just can you deliver your hammer where it needs to go, but also how many different parts of the table can you reasonably threaten or camp without spreading yourself too thin. Flying on good units nets you lots of bonus points because it's extremely strong. Deep strikes and ambushes vary in power but are good, and teleporting is very good. Finally, mechanics. Mechanics are your core gameplay elements beyond just the norm. Are you building up points by casting spells to summon extra units? Are you keeping track of every slain unit to spend blood tithe on one-shot bonuses or to summon demons? Are your endless spells supercharged so you can find neat combos to get the most out of them? Do you predict and control the cycle of corruption? Can you see the future so you know who's going to get the next turn or what your next nine rolls will be? These are often battle traits, but not always, and reflect the mechanics that you can build around to make for interesting and powerful gameplay. Another way to think about this category would be 
What can this faction do that fundamentally changes the way the game is played? In other words, what does your opponent have to play around, or have an answer to? Their exact effects often feed into one or more of the previous three, but again, all this stuff is connected. And as always, consistency is king. Part 5 of the faction focus is the conclusion plus target audience. How new player friendly is the army? Is it cheap or expensive? Does it have a bunch of fine cast or even metal, which would make it harder for new hobby people? Does it need 200 guys, which might turn some people off? Is it extremely popular, so hipsters might want to pick something more obscure? Is it really hard to play? Are the lists spammy or Neapolitan, etc.? So that's it for the preamble. Please enjoy the next series of videos where we use all of this info to go over the many factions in Age of Sigmar and help you decide on an army.